All right, it is time to get going. Welcome everyone. Cheers. Uh, got my coffee mug, which never has coffee in it. I don't drink coffee. I fill it with Diet Coke, but I, I like the way it looks when I hold a mug, right? Welcome to Unlocking Agency Secrets, five things social media agencies do that your business should too. Got some great stuff to cover today. Really quick, I want to say hello. I am here in uh, Seattle today, and uh, I see we have people watching Samantha in the UK, Roland in Jamaica. Um, we've got, uh, oh, Byron, who is uh, here in Seattle. Hi, Byron. You should have just come over. You could have sat next to me. Uh, Jenny in Sweden, Sue in Massachusetts, Jen in Ontario, Canada, Canada Lynn in Ohio. Um, lots and lots of people here. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate this. I'm excited to share what uh, we're going to share today. And by the way, I do want to encourage you, uh, Louie in South Carolina. Hi, Louie. I do want to encourage you to engage and be active today. And uh, to reward that, every time that you do comment in the chat box, because I think when you are engaged, you'll get more out of this. Uh, when you comment in the chat box each time, at the end, I'm going to choose somebody and send them a $25 Amazon gift card that you can use in your business for something. Maybe it's something you need for your office, or uh, if you're going to do more video, I mean, there's a great uh, lavalier mic that I use a lot of the time that's like 25 bucks. But whatever it is, I want to send that to you for being engaged and participating today. So every time you comment. Now, don't be the person who just goes comment, 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 comment. My team will definitely disqualify you if you do that. But uh, meaningful comments. Thank you so much for um, uh, being a part of this today. So um, I want to uh, talk first about some of the reasons that you might be here. Okay. Um, reasons that you might be here just so that you feel like I'm not wasting your time. Uh, you might be here because you're a business owner, a manager, or anyone who's gotten frustrated with your social media. You also might be here because you know social media has value for your business, but you feel like you should be getting more out of the work you're putting in, right? And you might be here because you find it ridiculous that Facebook won't even let you reach all the people who decided to follow you. You post something and almost nobody sees it on a business page. Uh, so if any of those sound like you, I think we're gonna be able to provide some great value for today and that this could improve your marketing immediately. So some things to expect. I'm gonna cover the five things agencies do that you should do too as covered in the title. These are things we do at my agency, but they are all things you can do for your business, whether you're an office of one or a team of 15. Also to expect today, know these can work for your business now, no matter what size it is. Entrepreneurs tell me all the time, they wish they could hire a, an agency, but it's just too expensive. And with these five things I share today, you're going to get some of that agency magic. All right, and then also I want you to know that some of these will work even better for you as a business owner than they do for agencies. When we take on clients at the agency, you know, we, I feel like we do a great job, but we are just one step outside of the business, even if it's a tiny step. I have a close relationship with some of our agency clients. We're still just like a tiny step out. And because of that, some of these will work better if you're doing this for your own business that you own or even a business that you work in as a social media manager or as a marketing person. So I know if you have a business, you are busy, so I promise we'll move quick today, but I want you to stay to the end to get all you can out of it. So to sweeten the pot, if you do, I'm gonna offer a free bonus download at the end, seven reasons your social media content isn't working and actionable ways to fix it. These are different things than what we're talking about today, but certainly along the same lines if you're trying to get more out of your social media than you have been. So if you are posting about this at all today while you're watching, I'd love to see it. I know when I watch a, a class or I'm listening to a podcast or reading a book, or listening to an audiobook, as the case usually may be. Um, I love to be able to share it with uh, my friends and family and followers. So if you're doing that for anybody, I'd love to see it too. I'm at Mr. Jerry Potter. So you can tag there for your Instagram story or wherever else it might be. All right. I want to make three promises to you today. My three promises to you are, first of all, all five of these things cost little to no money. Okay. All five of these cost little to no money. At no point, Am I going to say, agencies spend $10,000 a month on Facebook ads, and if you do this, you'll reach more people too? Because, duh, right? Uh, now, certainly, even if you don't know what you're doing, if you've got $10,000 to spend on Facebook, you're going to reach more people. That's not what today is about. All five of these things are also things you can start doing tomorrow, or depending on what time it is, where you are, today even, for your business. And my third promise, this is live 
And so uh, <laughs> I don't know, how do you prove live now? It's not like I have a newspaper I can, I can hold up and, and show you today's newspaper, but it's 9.05 here in Seattle, 9.05 Pacific Daylight Time right now on uh, Tuesday, April 30th. And uh, we are live, so I want you to know I'll be able to do uh, Q&A at the end. So you can type your questions in the chat box at any time, and then we will address them when we get to the end. In fact, actually, if you have, if you have specific questions, if you look at the bottom on Zoom, you should see a Q&A button. Go ahead and type that, uh, tap that, and then you can put your questions in there for us to address. Uh, just a, a few tips for watching today, and really, they're all the same tip. Focus, focus, focus. I know I sound like a, uh, a middle school teacher, but I know when you're a busy business owner like we are, you're always trying to multitask. But you will get a lot more out of what I'm revealing today. If you focus, maybe take some notes, close your other tabs, put your phone on, do not disturb, so whatever it takes. This will also make sure the stream comes through nice and clear because you're not bogging down your device with a bunch of other tasks. The whole thing will be less than an hour. And let me, let me put it this way. If you, put it, if you pay full attention to what we're covering today, I truly believe it will save you way more time for many weeks and months and years to come than any amount of multitasking will save you right now. Like if you happen to be replying to emails, maybe you reply to three emails over the next hour, but you miss something important that could save you a lot more time going forward. So I do want to introduce myself uh, really quick. Uh, my name is Jerry Potter, and uh, at its most basic, I help business owners win the fight against social media algorithms. I've spent my whole career as a content creator with an emphasis on creating loyalty, engagement, and sales. I did this as a radio host, did some TV, and then, of course, online. Now I primarily focus on online. I've lived all over the place, uh, but currently I live in Seattle. Uh, yes, we throw fish here. Yes, we've got four coffee shops on every corner. Bill Gates and I are obviously best friends. Um, and uh, full-time, I'm the chief marketing officer and creative director for an agency with clients here in Seattle and in the Bay Area. So I'm also the founder of 5-Minute Social Media, which may be how some of you found me. It's a YouTube channel, for anybody that doesn't know, that helps small business owners win the fight against the algorithms and save time on their marketing. I know that most small businesses can't afford, or actually most businesses in general can't afford an agency, but I don't think that means you shouldn't be able to have great social media. So that's why I started the channel in the first place, was just kind of share and help people. I am married. My wife's name is Candy. Yes, that's her real name. No, she's not a stripper. She always preferred that I point that out. I also have uh, two tiny superheroes at home. And yes, we are the kind of family that occasionally goes to the mall in costume. Occasionally, they'll let me be Superman even. So um, how did I get here? Well, in 2014, I was frustrated by social media, maybe like you are today. I was working for a company that wanted us to post on Facebook 48 times a day. And that's not a typo, by the way. <laughs> the first time I used this slide, somebody said, don't you mean four to eight, like four dash eight times per day? No, 48 times a day. So if you're a time-strapped entrepreneur feeling like you're putting all this time into social media and getting almost nothing back, I'm, I've been there. I get it. That and the way things are changing, you get an expert one week that's more, and then the next less, and the following week, post more. It's like, ah, how do you keep up with all that? So by 2015, I started thinking there's got to be a better way to do things. So I started studying what agents we were doing, and I joined a startup agency at the time to continue learning and testing. And then I started learning. So for the last couple of years, I have been teaching what I've learned through one-on-one -on -one coaching, both online and in-person seminars, uh, as well as at some uh, conventions. So today... As promised, Unlocking Agency Secrets, I want to share with you the five things social media agencies do that every small business should too. And as I mentioned, some of them will work even better for small businesses. And the things that I'm going to share with you today are, when I say the word secrets, there are secrets in the sense that I find that a lot of entrepreneurs and business owners don't know them. But they're not secrets locked in some vault somewhere. I just want to, I want to mention this because if your expectation is that in exactly three slides, I am going to tell you the secret to dominating social media marketing is to post 2.74 times per week exactly. That's not what this is. But they are five things agencies do to increase efficiency and improve results. And you can totally do them too, okay? So let's get into it. So number one thing that agencies do that you should too is focus. And with this, uh, 
I don't mean putting on new age music or a white noise machine or even muting your phone like I suggested that you do today. This is all about focusing your resources and time. It's honestly truly amazing how much time social media can suck up from your life. When I first started working for the agency the number of years back, and I remember um, sitting down with my boss and uh, you know, she said, yeah, the clients are really happy with everything you're doing, it's great. And then she said, how much time are you spending? And I don't remember what number I told her, but I gave her the number and she went, had this look on her face and I'm like, what? And she looked at me and she goes, we're not charging enough. You're spending how much time? And, you know, social media, we, you know, we were started up at the time, so we weren't at a maximum load of clients, but social media can suck up a ton of time. What do I do with my, uh, here. So as an example, I always say, like, here is a, uh, here is a pen. I was going to say it's a big pen, but apparently it's a generic pen because I'm frugal. I could run a Twitter account for this pen and easily make it a 40 hour a week job. I could comment on topical things, trending hashtags. The pen could do live videos on Periscope. The pen could tweet at celebrities. Like it would be easy to do. That's how much of a time suck social media can be. So when my boss had that look on her face about like, oh, we have to charge more or get more efficient. That's when I knew, okay, I gotta figure this out. So what do I mean by focus? Well, for starters, uh, for each brand or client, agencies often choose one to two social networks instead of trying to be on all of them. And this has changed a lot in the last several years. In 2015, when you could still reach a lot of people on social media for free, the strategy of blanketing mediocre brand messages everywhere still sort of worked. But in 2019, you will do much better killing it on one to two social networks rather than half efforting them. I had a different word in my notes, but rather than putting in half an effort on all of them. And I'm curious actually right now, real quick, if you could tell me um, in the chat, how many social networks does your business or brand try to keep up with right now? Is it two? Is it seven? Are you on some of the really bizarre ones? Um, like, uh, you know, in other, you know, other countries that people don't necessarily use? How many are you on right now? I would love to see the number um, in the chat box, if you can uh, put that in there right now. And then uh, we'll come back to what your answers were in just a second. But I wanted to um, share with you sort of a, a tool that I use to help people decide where they should be. And I call it the $5 method to choosing social networks. And uh, this is essentially a story framework that kind of gets your mind in the right place. So many of us use a tool simply because it's free. Like we go, oh, well, Snapchat's free and I can reach people or Twitter's free. I got to be on there. It's free. But you have to think about other things. So imagine if you woke up tomorrow and the heads of each social network were gathered together at a press conference. So on the screen there, there's uh, Mark Zuckerberg from Facebook and Instagram. And you've got uh, the LinkedIn guy who I can never remember his name and Evan Spiegel from Snapchat, and Jack Dorsey from Twitter. They're all there at the big press conference. And they said, we know you are a addicted to social media. So starting next month, we're going to charge you $5 a month for each social media network you want to use. So it's five bucks. So if each social network was $5 a month, how many would you keep? If the difference between using a social network or not is five bucks a month, then it's definitely not worth your time. I had a guy tell me, oh, well, I got a client off of Twitter two years ago. I said, how much do you tweet? And he goes, oh, I don't know, 10, 12 times a day. I'm like, you're sending out 84 tweets a week for one client you got two years ago? Like, unless that one client equaled your annual salary, that is not worth your time. So really think about what's worth your time and what isn't. And whenever I talk about this, by the way, in live events, there's always a guy that raises his hand and, you know, like he's going to ask me a question. But then he turns to the crowd proudly and says, I post on all the social networks and it doesn't take me much time at all. So let's call him Lester. And uh, he goes on to explain the magic of scheduling software like Buffer and Hootsuite and Later. And I want to uh, you know, point out, scheduling software is amazing and I use it. And it should be a key part of your strategy to save time. But I usually ask the guy how much business he gets from social media. And I'm not trying to embarrass the guy. I would do the same thing if Lester and I were having a one-on-one -on -one coaching session or having coffee. And he'll usually reply, well, I don't get a lot of business from social media. Or he'll say something like, well, it's for branding purposes. 
And I'll tell you today, if you're just pushing the same content out on Instagram and LinkedIn and Twitter and Snapchat and Facebook and, you know, Facebook groups, all these different places, you're not getting much branding at all. You're taking a shortcut, but it's a shortcut to a dead end. It's really not working for you. So just something to keep in mind if you like scheduling software, it's great to use, but you've really got to be strategic about it. Plus, if you're putting content out on all the channels, it doesn't leave you time for the fifth thing that social media agencies do that you should too. And we'll cover that, of course, today. Real quick, I want to see, um, we've got some comments. Two social networks I use, uh, four counting YouTube. Oh, here's my favorite. Uh, Jen says, four plus six dating sites. I work for a nightclub. So there you go. That's unique. So really getting down to focus can make a big difference. Second thing that social media agencies do that your business should too is optimize. And I know that that is a cliche of a word, or it certainly has become a cliche of the word. We got to optimize backwards overflow, you know, whatever that means. But there's really no better word for what I'm talking about. And by optimize, I mean going through all your social media channels you are using and setting them up in the best way possible for your business. It baffles me that people don't do this because these are one-time tasks that we do right away for a new agency client. And you should do it soon as you can, if you haven't already, for your business, including now. It'll make a big difference. You've probably seen this on Facebook. We'll use Facebook as our example for optimization today. Um, but you, you've probably seen this on Facebook, somebody looking for a recommendation. People are now searching for businesses on Facebook more than ever. And uh, more than that, they're looking for these recommendations. So if you've seen this, imagine all of a sudden somebody tags you in the comments for your business, and then somebody clicks on your Facebook page and it looks abandoned or you've done nothing with it. Like how pointless and how frustrating would that be? They're not going to call you because you don't even look like a business because you haven't posted in 17 years and, and you don't have a cover photo and your username is misspelled or you know whatever it might be. So this is what I mean. This is why it's important to optimize, even if you're not posting on that platform. Facebook is becoming an important place for business listings like Google and Yelp. So even if you're not posting, make sure to optimize. And so when somebody comes to your Facebook, and again, we go really deep on how to optimize all the different major social networks in the full online course that I teach. But this is, uh, you know, a couple things you can consider for Facebook is having a great profile and cover photo. Pro profile photo should be your logo or your face if you are the company. But think about this. What do you do when you check out a business on Facebook? A lot of times we don't click on the about page unless we're looking for something specific. But a lot of times we'll click on a profile picture or a cover photo to get a closer look. And if you've never realized it, you can add a caption to your cover photo and your profile photo. They don't give you that option when you upload it. But when you click on it, you can go in and add a caption afterward. This is your chance to convert them by giving them a reason that you're awesome or different than your competitor, and as well as a way to contact you. So if you do one thing today, after watching this, go to your Facebook business page, add the info, why you're awesome, and a call to action to the captions of your profile and cover photo on Facebook. I had one woman do this, and uh, she was an insurance salesperson, and the next day, she got an inquiry from Facebook. And you know, those insurance policies can be very, very valuable too. There are lots of other things you can do to optimize um, on Facebook, but start by filling out all the possible information and reviewing your settings. All right, the third thing social media agencies do that you should too is they romance the algorithm. I wish I could have some romantic music to play for this part. A lot of us think that the uh, social media algorithm is the enemy, and that's okay. And when I ask people if they could wave a magic wand to get help with one thing in their social media, more often than not, people bring up the algorithm and they describe it like an ex-boyfriend or ex-girlfriend that stole all their stuff and set it on fire, like, oh, the algorithm. And, I, and if you want to think of the algorithm with as, an, as an enemy, great. As I mentioned at the beginning, I want to help you win that fight. But if you're going to think of it as a villain, don't let it be the reason for a pity party. What frustrates me is when I hear entrepreneurs say anything like, oh, if it wasn't for the algorithm, I'd be rich or darn algorithm foiled again. It's ruining my business. I can't beat it. Don't, don't use the algorithm in that way to be discouraged. If you're going to think of the algorithm as an enemy or a villain, well, why don't you be the sexy spy who seduces it to get what you want? It's what happens in all the spy movies, right? And I know that's kind of a cheesy analogy, but 
you need to romance the algorithm or more simply put, you need to create content for the social media algorithms or don't create content at all. That's what good agencies do. So I teach people about how the algorithms work a little deeper in my course, but it, it's most basic for what I've got time for today. I wanna to tell you algorithms favor engagement above everything else. So create content designed to get engagement and most specifically comments. And this goes on all platforms. This is not just a Facebook thing or a Twitter thing or anything like that. All right. The number four thing social media agencies do that your business should too is, and actually let me pause for a second before I reveal this. Remember at the beginning, one of my promises to you was that I wasn't going to pop on here and say agencies spend $10,000 a month on Facebook ads. And if you do that, you'll reach more people too. Obviously you will. But despite that, one thing that agencies do that you should do too is be willing to spend money. And this is tough. A lot of people groan when they hear this. And if you're one of those people, allow me to explain a little more. Because if you are doing your social media for a small business, a side hustle, there's not a lot of money coming in, I totally get that because I was there. But first of all, it doesn't take much when you spend money on social media. You'd be amazed what you can achieve on Facebook for like five bucks. And I'm gonna share a couple of examples here in a moment. But for those of us that have been in the game for a while, we remember the days where if you had 500 likes on your Facebook page, you could literally post something and reach 100 to 200 of those people for free. Those days are over though. On the screen is a study that a branding agency, Bonzi Jaden did on one of their clients. And this is kind of tracking organic reach or free reach on Facebook. So in 2015, it was already kind of on its way down and it was at 5%. So that means if you had hundred likes, five people would see your post organically. Then in 2016, it went almost in half. And then a little more in 2017, and then it halved again in 2018. So basically last year, and it's probably gone down more this year, but last year, if you had 500 likes on your Facebook page, five people would see your post for free. And there's a good chance that five of them, or at least three or four of them are actually your mom or your friends or you know whoever it might be who love to engage with your business because that's their way of supporting us, right? So free reach has just been plummeting. In addition to the declining free reach, you have to factor in the time that you spend posting. So we talked earlier about when you're choosing to uh, what no networks to be on so you can focus. Well, this is uh, another place where you have to kind of think about how valuable is your time. Let's say you post twice a day for a week. At the end of the week, you've got 14 posts. Some did better than others. So how long did it take you to create those 14 posts? And then ask yourself, did any of them bring you business directly? Not likes, but actual business. Odds are that out of those 14 posts, there might have been one or two that did really well, maybe three, and may have helped grow your business. So on the screen here, this is, I, think, I don't think it's actually 14, I think it's 12, but this was from one of my clients. And you can see that at the end of a week here, there were clearly a few posts that stood out among all the others. So rather than spend two hours or more coming up with 14 posts, what if you instead you came up with one post and then you put your salary behind it? And I know people are watching from all over and so let's go um, low for this. Let's say your time is worth $6 an hour. You spent two hours creating and posting those 14 posts. So let's say, what if instead you came up with one post and you put 10 to $12 your salary behind it to boost it on Facebook instead. You'll almost definitely reach more people than your other 14 posts combined. You'll get more engagement and you'll be more likely to attract the right clients or customers because you're putting out your best posts instead of just putting out a bunch of mediocre stuff to fill some made up quota of twice a day that you have. Plus by putting money behind it, you don't have to rush to put up another post later that day. The previous one, keeps showing up in news feeds and it'll keep showing up as long as you want, as long as you are obviously paying to boost it. But you can boost for as little as a dollar a day. You also get to show your best post or piece of content to lots of people instead of all of that mediocre stuff. One more thing, when you put a little money behind it, you can reach people that aren't currently fans of your page. Normally, if you post on Facebook, only the people that have liked your page or followed it will see it unless you get some shares. But put a little money behind it, you can decide, oh, I want to show it to people with these interests or people in this zip code or this city or, you know, any number of things. And that's how you get new people, hopefully bring you new business. 
So a couple of uh, boosting successes I wanted to share. This is a post we did for one of my restaurant clients that was rolling out breakfast. And we put it up and we put $5 behind it. Basically, we made a fun video about their new breakfast service. It immediately took off with $5 reaching thousands of people. So we added more budget. I think ultimately we spent 30 bucks on it and it reached almost 13,000 people for 30 bucks. Where else can you do that other than social media? Can't get a billboard for 30 bucks, not even on a slow road. <laughs> so another one, this was a slightly bigger budget, but we were doing all you can eat fish and chips nights. We created a Facebook event. We put 40 bucks behind it. It reached 50,000 people. Now, in the interest of full disclosure, we spent another, um, I think, $16 on a separate campaign to get people to make reservations and promote the same event. On an average Monday night, this particular restaurant makes $3,000. We spent $56 to promote this event for this Monday, and they got $7,000 in sales that night. So that's a $4,000 increase from a $56 promotion. That's what I'm talking about. Now, I do want to just point out, not everything you put money behind is going to turn out big. Um, I had somebody that watched me talk about this and then they turned around and they said, hey, I spent 30 bucks and we reached a bunch more people. And then it kind of turned out, okay, well, did it bring you any business? You know, you really want to be careful. So I wouldn't run out and say, yeah, let's spend 30 bucks. Like I said, you can do a dollar a day. So if it's good content, another thing you can do is if you have a post that's already doing well organically, then you can put a little money behind it to reach some new people. And that will tend to work pretty well. So proceed slowly is what I'm saying. I mean, like you said, you can do it for as little a dollar a day or $5 a day. It doesn't have to be 30 or the, you know, the, fifth, the big $56 that we spent for this restaurant to make an extra $4,000. All right, uh, before we get to number five, I do want to remind you that uh, I do have this bonus for you, the seven reasons your social media content isn't working um, and actionable ways to fix it that we'll get to here when we wrap up today. And I also wanna get to your questions, of course. But the number five thing social media agencies do that your business should too is be social on social media. What does that mean? That's what I sometimes think when I see this slide pop up. Well, a lot of companies treat social media like a broadcasting platform. They do the media, the posting, but forget all about the social. One thing that agencies do and that smart businesses do is they spend time commenting and engaging. And this is something that you can probably do better than any agency could in your own business because you know your customers and clients so well, and you have relationships with some of them. So as uh, my friend Chelsea Pites, who teaches real estate agents how to use video to grow their businesses, she's got a great phrase for this, don't stalk unless you talk. In other words, don't just browse social media, engage with people. So uh, two giant benefits of getting social on social media. As a busy business owner, you've got to decide how much time you can spend on this. And honestly, you'd be amazed if you, if you, if you develop a strategy for this, what I call outward engagement, you spend 10 minutes a day on it. You'd be amazed how many more people come to the party, come to your business. If you can spend an hour a day on it, then, you know, then it goes up dramatically too. But it really can be simple. And there's two, two main benefits. One, you build relationships and you introduce new people to your brand, okay? And the other one is when you engage on your own content, you get more free reach. We were talking about how the algorithm works. Well, when it's on your content, you put a post up on Instagram or Facebook or Twitter or LinkedIn, Every time someone comments, that helps you in the algorithm and it reaches more people. Then you comment back, they'll show it to more people. If that first person comments back again, they'll show it to more people. So you're basically gaming the algorithm in this way. And this is what all the social media networks want. Facebook is the main one that's talked about this, wanting meaningful conversations to happen. But honestly, this is like, if you can make the time to do this social part of social media with a good strategy, you will have great success reaching more people without even spending anything in that scenario. And what I like to do is make it a game. And when I coach my community managers at the agency, I say comment in a way that the other person will comment back. So none of this, uh, thanks for the comment, bro. Like if they say, oh my gosh, I love this, because you posted a picture of a sunset, let's say. Don't just say, you know, thanks, glad you liked it. Even if it's as simple as say, saying, isn't it beautiful? 
comma, name, question mark. Then they comment back again. Then you're starting the conversation. Um, or if it's a sunset, you could say, hey, where is this um, actually, uh, you know, where, where, you know, have you been to this place where you took the sunset? I just thought of the sunset example off the top of my head. But, you know, make it a game. Comment in a way that the other person will comment back. I'm not saying to go 17 days of conversations with this person. At some point, maybe just move it to the uh, private messages if you want to talk that much. But here was, uh, this was something that I did for a car dealership. And this engagement took me maybe a total of two minutes. And look at the connection that was made. I think the original topic was, what is your dream car? And I spent two minutes engaging with her. She wanted to, uh, you know, she said, oh, I want this 1979 Jeep Renegade. I said, what color? She said, not picky. I just found a picture on Google image search. I pasted the link rather than uploading the picture. So I wasn't violating any copyright. And she replied, heart, heart however many hearts that is, almost in tears. That's so beautiful. This emotional connection was made. And it may be worth selling her a $20,000 car from this dealership the next time that she's looking. By the way, thank you everyone for all of your uh, comments today. It's great to see. And if you see Austin in there, he is helping me produce today. And he, is, uh, he also works in social media marketing. And uh, so if he's answering your questions, he totally knows what he's talking about too. So, but thank you for all of the engagement. So yes, the fifth thing is be social on social media. So imagine how powerful your results could be later this year if you did those five things. Focus, optimize, get social, be willing to spend, and romance the algorithm. Now, I will tell you, beyond those things, the single most effective thing you can do to help you be successful on social media is build an easy to follow social media marketing plan. And the great thing about a plan is it doesn't suck up your mental capacity. You have a plan, you fulfill it, and you're not going, oh, I haven't posted in a week, or you know, that stress goes away. This is the single most effective thing I've been teaching my coaching clients for the past few years is to build this plan. Now for agency clients, we develop the plan and we execute it, but for small business owners that aren't gonna hire an agency, you can still build the plan and execute it yourself in a minimal amount of time. I mean, tell me if this is true. This is my favorite part. It's like, once you have the plan, it doesn't take that much time to execute it. And whether your company is full-time or your side hustle, you're probably not sitting there thinking, wow, I've got so much free time to work on my business. I wonder how I can spend it, <laughs> right? You're busy running a company. Tell me in the uh, chat if uh, this sounds like you. I know social media can grow my business, but I don't have the time to do it right. Can you relate to this? Uh, if that sounds like you, give me a yes, or a, that's me in the uh, chat, box. Uh, chat box. Louis says, yes, three exclamation points. Kathy says, 100%. Um, let me give you another one. Does this sound like you? It feels like social media changes all the time and I'm too busy to keep up with every new thing. How about that? Give me a heck yeah in the chat if that's how you feel, because that is a real struggle. Oh, I love it. The comment box is just blowing up. They're going too fast for me to read. Thank you, guys. Um, and, and maybe this is more your personality. It's not for everybody, but social media can be so ugh, frustrating. If you felt like that, let me know in the chat box. But do not type your guesses about what the second to last word on the screen is, okay? Let everybody just fill that in on their own. Let's not put that in the chat box. But let me know if you felt that way. So I want to give you an alternative to that feeling. Imagine how it would feel if you had a social media marketing plan that once you set it up, you could execute it all in minutes a day. Imagine how it would feel to have a plan that would continue to work even when the billionaires at Facebook decide to change the algorithm again. They keep doing that, right? But if you have a plan that's made on basic smart principles of social media, of human psychology, it doesn't really affect it as much. And then imagine how it would feel if while your fellow entrepreneurs continue to be frustrated, people that are not watching today, you were able to become fearless about your social media because you have a plan that's working. So I just want to mention this here real quick. Kelly says, is that even possible, Jerry? <laughs> well, let's talk about that, <laughs> Kelly. I love it. If those scenarios excite you, um, you might be excited to know about the course that I do teach that's a little longer and more in-depth than this. It's called Frustrated to Fearless, How to Build a Social Media Marketing Plan Like a Pro. 
And what this is, is a five week live online course based on how we build the marketing plans of our agency clients. And I've designed this course. You don't have to go through the challenges of figuring out social media um, on your own anymore. I also want you to know that this isn't a pre-recorded course that was recorded two years ago and I put it online and then I just hope people buy it and we'll, you know, we'll see what happens. This is live every single week and I'm there with you live in the course to make sure that you don't get stuck and you keep going. And the other thing is that this gets customized for your business. I've had a variety of different types of businesses um, in this course. And I believe that honestly, social media should be easy and it shouldn't be frustrating. And honestly, it doesn't have to be. That is my hope for you. So let me tell you a little bit about what we cover in the course. Um, we're gonna cover the exact 10 step system I use to build social media marketing plans for my agency clients. And each step is honestly pretty simple to follow, but when you put them all together, it creates a very powerful plan, okay? We're also going to talk about how to choose the best social media networks for your unique personality and your business. So obviously for your business is important, but your personality is too. If you are a one person business and your <laughs> live video, the idea of it terrifies you to death, Facebook Live, probably not your thing. You're in the witness protection program. Anything involving your face online probably isn't going to work. We're also going to cover how to use social media to get actual business, not just likes. Likes are good for our self-esteem and our ego sometimes, but they're not going to actually pay the bills. In Frustrated and Fearless, we talk about how to ace the algorithm, how to create content that gets engagement and shares. We're going to go into the psychology of why people engage and share posts so you can create content that fits that. Um, we're going to talk about how often your business should post on each social network for maximum results. It's not as much as it used to be, which of course is another way to save time. We're going to talk about how to schedule more content in less time. We're going to talk about how to find your ideal audience on each social network. A lot of business owners say, yeah, I put stuff up, but I'm not getting any new clients. Well, sometimes you have to go out and find the clients and bring them to your social media, or at least point them in the right direction. And we'll talk about that. We'll talk about how to reach the people on social media that don't open your emails. You might have a big email list, but what's your open rate? I think the average now is, uh, or what's considered decent is a 20% open rate, which means 80% of the people are not opening emails. And uh, we're also gonna talk about how to create a content calendar and a plan so that everything comes together and works together. Oh, one more thing too that uh, I'll share in the course. This is a, a tool I developed called Brainstorming Jeopardy. And I want to share it with you and teach you how to use it. And it works for just about everyone, even those of you who don't believe that you are creative. So I know I've listed a lot of stuff here, but here's what it comes down to. Frustrated to Fearless will show you how, step by step how to build a professional social media marketing plan. And it doesn't matter if you're just starting out or if you've been doing social media for years. If you don't have an easy to follow plan, your social media isn't as good as it can be. And I mean, honestly, your life <laughs> isn't as good as it can be. So five weeks from now, if you decide to make this investment, you'll have a complete easy to follow social media marketing plan that you can execute week after week, month after month with only minor tweaks. And then you can leap into the air, do a happy dance, whatever you do to celebrate, eat chocolate chip cookies. That's what I do. Um, and more than that, you can go from being frustrated to being fearless about your social media marketing, allowing you to get back to the other parts of your business. Uh, Jan took the course and she sent me this three days after we did the last class. And I, when I got it, I replied, I was like, already? She said, yesterday I had a meeting with one of my clients who has now doubled my hours because she's seen so much value in what I'm doing. This is huge for me. It's like a promotion and I am thrilled. So you got a couple of choices today. One, you can make today the choice that you invest in yourself and in your business, and I will work with you to build your personalized social media marketing plan. Kiss your frustration goodbye, approach your social media marketing with confidence month after month for years to come. You can spend the next two to three years figuring this out on your own, or I'm happy to show it to you right now. Or choice number two, you can skip this opportunity and remain frustrated and stuck watch your competition leave you behind, and a year from now you'll be in the exactly the same place or possibly <laughs> even further behind. So uh, taking this course is deciding you're done being frustrated with social media because you'll have an easy to follow plan that you can repeat month after month. And I believe that everybody deserves that. I believe you deserve that. 
So let me talk uh, real quick about what you will get in the course if you sign up. You're gonna get full access to five one-hour lessons where I'll show you the steps I use to build social media marketing plans for both agency clients and small businesses. You're also gonna get live Q&A at the end of each lesson to ensure understanding and results. You're gonna get a downloadable PDF each week covering the major points of each lesson. I know some people like to take their own notes and other people don't, so I provide uh, some of the major points each week afterward. You're gonna get access to a private Facebook group just for people enrolled in the course that I will be in every day to make sure you don't get stuck. And by the way, that's kind of the goal of the way I've set this up is you won't have to face this alone anymore. I'm gonna be there with you along with other entrepreneurs and business owners and social media managers. You're also going to get lifetime access to the lessons, downloads, and discussions. So you can go back and review anytime. In fact, um, as you grow, I had somebody take the course and then they decided to turn a lot of the social media over to their assistant. So they had their assistant go back and watch the course for free because they still had access to it. And then another thing you're gonna get is what I call the five weeks to success guarantee. So here is what we're talking about. If you put in the work, but you are not 100% satisfied with the social media marketing plan you've built, I'll provide a free 30 minute one-on-one coaching call to get your plan where it needs to be. And honestly, I don't care if I have to do it for every single person in the course. I want to see you succeed. Teaching you and have you not, imp- not implement what I teach, that's not, I don't consider that, um, you know, making that, I don't consider that a success. I want to see you actually take action and do something with it. And that's why I want to be there every step of the way. Um, Thomas was one of my students that took me up on the guarantee because he needed some final guidance on his plan. And then he said, I'm not frustrated anymore. This course has given me tools to execute my thoughts and put out great content to establish my business, draw more people into my store and create a platform to build trust with people in my community. And Thomas owns a computer repair store. So I wanna answer the questions that you may have. So if you haven't yet, go ahead and uh, click that Q&A button and you can type them in there if you haven't already. And uh, if uh, I I just wanna say if, you know, kind of go over what you're going to get in the class here. If you were to hire me today to teach you one-on-one for five hours, it'd be $1,250. PDFs valued at about $500 total. Two months access to the private Facebook group. The value is going to vary depending on how much you use it, but it's basically unlimited coaching and guidance there in the group. You get lifetime access to the lessons, downloads, and discussions, as well as the five weeks to success guarantee. Total value, if you were to purchase all of this separately, is over $2,000. If you were to hire even a decent agency to do this kind of thing, it would be a minimum of two to $3,000 every month forever. But I've put together Frustrated to Fearless, how to build a social media marketing plan like a pro for a total cost of $397. Or you can uh, do three equal monthly payments of $147. And I do see we have some questions coming in and I love it. And I want to get to those here in a second. Um, So, but real quick, if you have already decided that you're ready to say goodbye to your social media frustration, you want to build an easy to follow plan, you can enroll now by going to frustratedtofearless.com. I know that uh, Austin posted that in the uh, chat box as well. So frustratedtofearless.com. When you get there, you're going to see uh, this is what the top of the page looks like. You'll see the name of the course and the big orange button. And it's just three easy steps. Go to the website, fill out your info. Step two, you'll get immediate access to the course and the welcome video. And then step three, the first live class is on May 13th. One other thing too, I want to mention uh, real quick too, because I know these are big decisions to make. Like, am I going to make this investment or not? I offer full refunds um, up to five days after the first class. And so you could take the first class, change your mind and say, yeah, it wasn't right for me and ask for your money back. And that's fine. I want to honor that. That being said, I actually give you all 10 steps in the first class. We don't go into obviously how to execute all of them, but I'll get, I give you the whole 10 steps there in the first class if you wanted to uh, sign up and kind of just see, you know, what it is there. But I, I want you to be happy as I think I've mentioned several times here. So that's why I mentioned that really quick. Um, so, Uh, By the way, if you register today, because I know sometimes people like to think about these things, and uh, I want to throw in one more thing for anyone who's just ready to jump in and sign up. If you register today, I'll throw in one more bonus. Uh, If you register by 1159 Pacific tonight, I'll throw in the Camera Shy Entrepreneur's Guide to Facebook Live. Live video continues to be the most engaging content on social media. So if you are camera shy, but want to experiment with live video, this is a great resource with a process to get over that.
Okay. Um, so again, frustrated to fearless.com. That's what you'll see when you get there. I'm excited to see so many of you are excited. Uh, I want to get to some of your questions here right now. Um, you can send them uh, privately just to panelists or you can send them to the uh, general chat box or the Q&A. We'll, we will get to them all there. So um, let's see. One of the questions, will replays be available if I can't participate in the course live some weeks? Yes. Um, I always get more out of courses if I watch live, um, but replays will definitely be available if the class is at a weird time where you live, uh, or sometimes it's kind of like, oh, well, I, I can be there every week, except this week I have an engagement or a previous meeting or whatever. So we always put the uh, replays up, and you can watch them. They're, they're, they go up later that night, but they, you can watch them the next day as well. Um, I know for some of you that are not in the United States, the time might just be at an awkward time period. Um, but even if you don't watch live, I'm still there to answer any questions you have in the Facebook group. Um, my business is unique. How will it work for my business? Oh, Austin compiled this from a few of your questions. So I have uh, used this planning system for lots of different industries, and it's always worked. And one of the great things about this class being live and being there in the group together is that we can customize it. So one of the things we'll talk about in the course is, you know, what are your social media goals? And I don't mean just like grow my business. Like, what do you want social media specifically to do for you? Because that's going to kind of set up what you want your social media to be like. That's kind of part of um, building the plan. The great thing is too, once you have access to the course and you learn how to build it, you know, I know sometimes people have more than one business or you change to another business in the future, or you've got a spouse that has a business. Like once you know how to build it, you can apply it to just about any, anything. So yes, I would say that this will work for your business uh, pretty much no matter how unique it is. If you have further concerns, feel free to send me a private message and, and we can kind of go deeper into that for your business. Um, by the way, I know, uh, for example, this last uh, round, you know, we had, uh, you know, uh, real estate agents take the course. We had a coffee retailer, a woman owns a skincare company, nonprofits, uh, you know, Thomas, the computer store owner, all of these different people. And this is, uh, you know, we had a life coach, someone in publishing. So this really does work for a variety of industries because we customize it. If I just said, hey, here's the plan, hope it works for you, that would be different. But you're going to get to customize it. Uh, with the group's guidance and with my guidance um, each step of the way. By the way, too, I know that sometimes you're in a specific niche and there are other courses for that niche, but I did have one real estate agent sign up and he goes, oh, there's so many social media courses for real estate agents, but everyone's taking the same ones. I wanted to make sure I'm doing something different. That's why I signed up for your course. I was like, oh, that's awesome. Um, oh, we've got some people signing up. Um, thanks to JD, who's enrolling in the course. Uh, Shireen, who just registered. Uh, Deborah says she's starting a social media management business. That's awesome, Deborah. Um, I wish I'd had this instead of having to figure it out on my own um, several years back. Um, some more questions though here. They're coming in through a few different windows. What kind of support do you provide if we get stuck? So um, first of all, the course is live, as I mentioned. So I'm going to be there to help you every week if you get stuck. And if you fall behind by a few days because you didn't watch live, you're watching the replay, I'm still there to help you get stuck. The first person I ever helped with this, it was a one-on-one -on -one coaching and he learned a ton and he's, oh, I loved it, I loved it. And then he didn't implement it because at the end, he didn't quite have it put together. So I did a follow-up meeting with him to get it together so that he could go through. And that's why I offer that five weeks to success guarantee. I am happy to do a one-on-one -on -one coaching call with anyone who wants it or needs it at the end just to make sure that you get there. Because um, that's success to me is if you actually implement the plan. Um, let's see. Uh, I just started my business and only have a Facebook page. Do I need a certain number of social media accounts or followers for the class to make sense? Great question. Um, absolutely not. Um, this class, I'll tell you what this class isn't. It's not about learning how to set up a Facebook page or an Instagram account. Um, I've got videos about that on YouTube. I can send them to you. It takes five minutes to do either of those tasks. This course is about building a social media marketing plan. And if you are a brand new business, you're going to save yourself a lot of frustration. And by the way, the opposite of you is also true. If you are a seasoned business, maybe you're already doing social media, but it's scattered. You're not getting results. This will help that person too. It's not set up. This is not a beginner's course and it's not an advanced course. It is a course where you learn the plan. That's the idea there. That's what we're trying to do. And like I said, I believe everybody deserves an easy to follow plan, deserves to not be frustrated. And that's what I kind of want to help um, achieve there. So um, some other questions over here. Um, uh, 
This might be a dumb question, but if everyone is doing the same thing, what's setting us apart? Great question, Kelly. So if you, first of all, I'll tell you what's setting you apart is your personality, your industry, your business. And now when I apply these to my agency clients, We've got restaurants, we've got plastic surgeons, we've got a doggy daycare, uh, we've got, you know, done it for collision centers, like there's all these different businesses. But the plan is not, it's not about, um, how do I put this? It's not about, hey, all you have to do is uh, go on and say these three words and then everybody's saying those three words. But like the real estate agent I mentioned, you know, if you take a real estate course, a lot of them are doing the same thing and, and real estate can be a crowded market. But th again, this is customized. If I put up something or just said, hey, buy this PDF for $47 and it'll teach you how to build the plan, you know, I could do that. And you might get stuck and a lot of people would end up with similar sounding plans. So, Every plan in the end, you know, everybody who took the course this last round, everybody that took, has taken this course when I've taught it in person live ends up with a different plan. And we customize as we go because you're going to be on different social networks. You're going to be uh, different frequencies. You're going to have different audiences. So, but that is a great question. Um, I see the cost of this course. What's going to cost me to execute this plan? Are you going to tell me to spend a bunch of money on ads? So I am definitely not going to tell you to spend a bunch of money on ads. Uh, great question. <laughs> that was my promise for the masterclass today. And the same thing for the course. But we are going to talk about how you can spend money on social media to reach more people. Um, when you are when you are on social media and you put something up and you get nothing out of it, it's like, eh, it's pretty frustrating. But if you were able to put $5 behind something and then get a $500 client from it, wouldn't you do that all day? But I will tell you, lots of businesses, including with the agency, have built a plan using this system and been successful spending zero dollars. So there, there is no big ad spend attached to this. But like I said, we're going to talk about, you know, how you could spend money and how it could be effective. So um, let's see, we have some more questions coming in here. Uh, what social media networks does this class focus on? So um, if you Google social networks, you'll see all these blogs, the top 112 social media networks in the world. Um, I'll tell you what we focus on primarily. Um, we focus on Facebook, both business pages, personal profiles, and groups. We focus on Instagram. We focus on Twitter. We focus on LinkedIn. And uh, those are going to be the major, major ones that we uh, do focus on. I don't focus on Snapchat because I honestly don't think Snapchat is the greatest business tool in the world with a few exceptions. Um, I also don't focus on Pinterest in this course. So those are, those are the big ones though, Facebook, Twitter, uh, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Um, again, because it's live and we do Q&A, if you have a YouTube channel, you got questions about YouTube, you know, we can certainly touch on that. But those are the main ones. We also talk about you know, your website and your email list a little bit there um, as well. So um, let me see another question here. Would this, uh, Mary Ellen says, would this course benefit nonprofits? I had somebody that uh, was in a nonprofit for my most recent round and she got a lot out of the course. And I'll tell you what um, was greatest for her, honestly, was taking some of this data back to her bosses and saying, hey, we are spending too much time on too many places. And here's how we should focus. And here's what we need to kind of do to optimize a little deeper in these places. I guess the big question to ask would be, um, are you, as your nonprofit, do you want to use social media to uh, gather donations or for general awareness or both? Because both of those things, it could certainly be effective for. Every nonprofit is different. So that's why I like to just go through and uh, clarify that. Um, Let's see, what is the start date and timing of the classes? Ah, good question. So the classes are gonna start, uh, the first class is gonna be on May 13th and they are on Monday nights at 7 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time here in the Pacific, 4 p.m., or sorry, 7 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time in the US, 4 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time. Um, you'll have to adjust, it's minus uh, seven GMT time. I've learned that as I've uh, met people from around the world. And uh, so that's when it'll be live each week on Mondays. If that doesn't work for you, like I said, the replays will definitely be available as well. Um, at what point in the growth of our business in terms of the size of it, would you recommend hiring or outsourcing our social media marketing campaign campaigns to an ad agency? Uh, do you think that I can get my employer? Oh, that's a second question. Okay, so good question. Um, I'll tell you that, Hiring and outsourcing 
there's a couple of things to consider here. One of the big things for a lot of business owners is trust. But if you have a social media marketing plan that's easy to follow, like you could take the course, set up the plan, and at that point you could have an assistant or a virtual assistant even execute it for you. The trust thing is a big piece of that because you got to trust them on, you know, to be your brand. But that's where, yeah, you can absolutely um, do that. And in fact, one of the, <laughs> so I mentioned a few minutes ago, I, I like, I'm fully transparent on this. I mentioned a few minutes ago to encourage you to take, you know, to invest today and buy the course. I said, I'll send you this Facebook Live, uh, the Shy Entrepreneur's Guide to Facebook Live. That's a bonus for today. And there'll be another bonus uh, that will be coming, which is how to outsource or hand over your social media marketing to somebody else. Um, so that will be something that will be available to you as well. Um, Kelly says, do you think I can get my employer to cover the cost of the class? I've had people do that in the past, Kelly. And uh, I would suggest if you wanna send me an email, tell me what you do, and then maybe I can kind of customize a, a few words for how you and your company would benefit from it. If you wanna do that, you can just reply to the email that had the link for the masterclass today, it comes right to me. But let me say this, um, if, if you, the main thing I would say is if I was convincing a, cust, a company to invest is, you know, I would point out the fact that this, first of all, but since I started doing this a couple of years ago, this system has not changed. So this is, there are no, I, I should mention this actually, this is a good time to mention this. There are no like hacks and tricks you know, where it's like, oh, if you do this, the algorithm will give you all this reach. Because anytime that happens, it lasts about three weeks. And then Instagram's algorithm figures it out and it doesn't work anymore. And then eventually they'll actually penalize you for trying to use those things. Engagement bait, for example, is a phrase that Facebook and Instagram use, where you're sort of tricking people into commenting that it's not a real meaningful comment. So this stuff is, is solid and it hasn't changed much in the last two years. So one thing I would say, Kelly, or for anybody who's thinking about, you know, asking their boss or their company to cover it is once your company has invested in this course, you got it. And if Kelly, you leave your company, then you could, you know, they could use the course already. You've already got it to train somebody else. So, um, let's see, is it too early to run Facebook ads? If you just recently started posting content on your page if not, how much content should you have before you run ads to make it an effective spend? That is from Austin. So there's two parts of um, advertising on Facebook. One of them is going to be boosting, which is what you do right there in the page. And the other is Facebook ads manager. And that is the more complex, robust uh, course. And some people ask, like, do you teach a class on Facebook ads? And honestly, I don't. And I don't for two reasons. One, there's a million of them out there. Two, because there's, Facebook actually has some really good free training, if you Google Facebook Blueprint, um, uh, on how to run ads in Ads Manager. So I'm going to answer your question based on boosting, which we do go to more in the course, um, Austin. But uh, if, is it too early to run if you just recently started posting content on your page? Not if you have good content and you know who your audience is. Because when you go to boost and advertise to them, you're going to get to choose who it shows them to. So I would say it's never too early. If you've got a post that's already engaging with your people that are there and you know who your audience that you want to go after is and you've got the budget for it and you think it'll bring you business, yes, by all means. Um, is spending money on your, uh, Fernanda says, is spending money for your business pages only? If so, then would it be worth creating a business only page? Um, so, you cannot spend money on a personal Facebook page. They just don't let you. You also can't spend money on a personal Instagram account. So with Facebook, you have to have a Facebook business page, which is a completely separate page. On Instagram, you can actually convert your personal profile into a business account. And we talk about this in the course. And then you could use that to advertise. Uh, Kelly says, how do you decide when to boost posts? That's going to be a little different for everybody. Um, and uh, I don't want to be the guy that <laughs> I worked for years. I mentioned in radio as a radio host. And occasionally you'd get somebody on and you'd ask them questions about their movie or their book or whatever. And they'd say, well, you got to buy the book. You got to go see the movie. And it's like, no, just answer my question, man. Um, but I don't have time to go kind of deep into that today, but it is going to be different for everybody. And we do talk about it more in the course, but how do you decide when to boost posts? Once you have a system and it's working, like for our agency clients, we both boost our posts right away. Um, one thing some people do is, well, they'll let it get a little organic reach first though. So there's some likes and some comments and then they'll boost it. Cause when somebody sees it in their feed, if it's already got some engagement, I think it, at least personally, it attracts my eye already. There's something about a post, a, a post with no likes and no comments that just looks more like an ad. And so I tend to just 
breeze, um, you know, right by it. Uh, Mike asked, can you focus your reach to niche markets? Yes, hugely so. And in fact, in week five of the course, we talk a lot about um, actually going in and finding your audience. And I'll take you in and show you how to find uh, specific audiences for the tutorial. We do Facebook and uh, Instagram, but you can go in and you can find the most unique niches of people. You can find people based on their interests, where they work, what industry they work in, how much money they make to an extent. Um, you know, there are all these things. They're changing all the time because Facebook has been, you know, tweaking who you can target and how. But it's really amazing how niche down you can actually, um, actually get with that. All right, it is 10 o'clock and I did say I would keep this to an hour and I wanted to answer as uh, many questions as I can. But let me just say this. If you decide to take this course, that's, that's you deciding that you are done being frustrated with social media marketing and you want an easy to follow plan that you can repeat month after month. And that is something that I can teach you how to do if you're interested. Um, so take a second, go to frustratedafearless.com. If I didn't get to your question uh, today, I'm still more than happy to answer whatever questions you have. So if you go to that link, there's a messenger link there and you can Facebook message me or just reply to any of the, um, any of the messages uh, that I, you got about the masterclass today. Just reply to that email. That's my personal email and I'll be happy to uh, reply to you there. Um, we do have some more people enrolling. Let me welcome uh, Bradley enrolled. Welcome Bradley, Selena, uh, Christine. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So cool to see people that are gonna be in here and uh, learning together. Um, so this is, if you are ready for this, if you are ready to have that frustration go away and have a plan, head on to frustratedfearless.com right now. Again, this is what you're going to see when you get there. And it's three easy steps. All you have to do is uh, fill out your info. Then you'll immediately get access to the curriculum and a welcome video. And then the first live class will be on May 13th. So simple as that. So frustrated fearless.com. If you would like to um, see more about it and enroll, I will also be in Facebook Messenger. And the link to my Facebook Messenger is right there on that page to answer any more questions that you may have. And if you think of it later, you can, like I said, reply to any of um, those emails. And I look forward to talking to more of you on May 13th. So um, I do want to mention this as promised the bonus download, seven uh, reasons that your social media content isn't working and actionable ways to fix it. All you have to do is go to five minute social media.com slash seven reasons. There's no opt in. You don't have to give me your email. It's just there for you to download again, uh, five minute social media.com slash seven reasons. So head there, you can grab that right now. Um, and I'll have Austin uh, type that if he's listening, hopefully in the chat as well, but five minute social media.com slash seven reasons. And, uh, I will see you over there in the uh, chat if, in the, um, uh, Facebook Messenger chat at frustratedfearless.com if you have any more questions about this. So that being said, thank you so much for watching today. If uh, this is the end of our um, relationship and you're not taking the class, I still appreciate you being here. I hope you got a lot of value out of it. And uh, I would love to connect on social media at Mr. Jerry Potter. So thank you so much.